welcome to another episode. This time, we'll be showing you, or I'll be showing you, how to repair a kick-based drum or an electronic drum. I purchased an NUXBN210 and it was working fine for almost a year. <clears throat> Actually, it, the warranty just lapsed uh, when it got broken. Uh, maybe one of the reasons is uh, because of the area of the kick area here. Uh, by my estimation, it can accommodate two batters or the double pedal. So I did purchase uh, a double pedal and then maybe after doing uh, almost a month of uh, session, uh, using the double pedal and maybe trying to uh, uh, abuse the system then it finally gave in now of course I've um, been trying to find ways to make it work again so when I try to kick it very hard uh, it will generate a sound but if I kick it uh, a little bit softer then there's no sound so my suspicion is that there is a loose connection uh, by that behavior alone. And then after the loose connection assumption would be maybe a, a soldered cable or component has been detached. So this time I brought it, I brought the kick, uh, kick tower here in the office and I'm going to try and repair it. So just in case I already ordered online some uh, piezo elements. So here, these are piezoelectric sensors. Actually very cheap. Uh, if you search online, this costs around $5 or 250 pesos. Uh, in uh, in the marketplace and I got 10 pieces so I bought this just in case that I need to replace the piezo in here so let's start so a basic tools would be uh, a screw so I have two the smaller one and the larger one in case I need to yank some of the parts to allow me to gain access on the internals and then your typical soldering iron, your lead, and some paste, of course, an electric tape, and a cutter, small cutter. So let's try to dismantle this, this tape. First, you need to remove the proper uh, protection. So this is where your thick uh, batter hits. Here and then there will be a soft foam here to dampen the pressure uh, enough to just trigger the piezo device. And then at the bottom, you need to disconnect the wire. Okay, so I hope you see it. It's disconnected now. Now there's two layers here. One foam here, which is attached. Uh, with an adhesive to a metal plate and then at the rear I don't know if you can see there's another so you need to be very careful in trying to detach this I've already detached this so you can use a cutter to minimize uh, fragmenting the foam as much as possible you need to preserve the foam so what I did uh, because it's already removed okay so you need to be very careful. Okay. So it's detached. So you see here, there's two foam layers. One, uh, there's the rubber protection here and it hits the battery hits here. And then there's another foam here. So this acts like a double insulation to dampen the pressure. And then at the middle will be your piezoelectric sensor. Okay, now I just found when I tried to yank the covering that there might be no problem with the piezo sensor at all. 
one of the connectors, uh, one of the wire is actually detached. So all I have to do now is just uh, try to resolder and then test it at home. If it doesn't work, then I have this uh, 10 pieces <coughs> of the Paizo <coughs> device that I purchased online. So it should be easy after that. Okay. So start with the soldering. We just have to put this thing back. So after soldering the detached cable, I'm now going to attach this thing to here. Attaching with the cover with the proper lid, bottom lid to the lid between. It's done. It's now time for testing at home. Till next time.